some wine. And I'm having a non-alcoholic cider. Yay! Yay. Roles reversed. <laughs> oh dear. Matt, you can be designated driver. I mean, I normally carry you both, so... Hi, my name's John, and I've been relegated to doing the podcast from the corner of the dining room tonight. And I'm John, and I'm allergic to plasters. And I'm not John, and this is with John Rather. It's a podcast where I ask two people called John, would they rather question? You probably know the format by now. We are. This is our second episode since we've started going live, and the listeners keep on listening, so... We're doing something interesting, maybe as a study, maybe we're doing something right. Let us know any way that you can. Leave leave comments on, on iTunes. I want, I, want, I want the first uh, review on iTunes. I don't even care if it's a one star. One star is better than no stars. Wouldn't you agree, Johns? Would not recommend. I... Would never eat here again. <laughs> 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 yeah, our first review and they've accidentally reviewed the wrong thing. This isn't, this isn't Yelp. My wife got food poisoning from listening to your podcast. If, if we manage that, then that's that's impressive. I mean, I went on Trustpilot and I couldn't find a single review about actual pilots. I've, I've never heard of Trustpilot, so... Well, you're tweet. living behind the times. Tweet at us if you found that joke funny. Let us know. Because it went straight over <laughs> my head. <laughs> It flew right over. Oh, there we go. He saved it. He saved it. Right. Well, I'm going to uh, I'm going to continue the trend from last week as uh, it's still festival season for me. So I've got another festival themed question. Are you ready, gents? Uh, yeah, I was drinking. I'm your, good. Your, your stein of uh, rum and ginger beer. Stop. Yes. <clears throat> so I'm well, I'm well in the mood for a festival. I know. Is it, is it your Rumstein? Oh! Hey! <laughs> oh, God. Fantastic. So, would you rather attend a music festival as a member of the public or play a music festival as one of the bands? I like to play a music festival. I think that's something I've, I've, well, I always wanted to do. I've, I've always really enjoyed large crowds of people and performing for them and, and feeling like I'm giving back to them, entertaining them. Um, I've never, never been in a position where I've had a band that's been good enough to play in front of more than about 30 people in a pub. So I'm, I'm hoping that they'd cheer me and not boo me off stage, but I, I think it would be a really, really exciting experience to be, you know, even on like third stage download in front of several thousand people with professional musicians, peers, people that you've respected for years and years floating around in the backstage area and then all the other really cool people that pay for VIP tickets floating around, like having people dispense JD straight into your mouth. I think I think it'd be a, an absolute hoot. I think it really would be. People that are professionals in playing music loud, having a good time, rather than people that are trying to find somewhere to avoid standing directly in front of the speaker and try and get out the sun for 20 minutes. And pay five pound per beer that tastes like piss and is served in a plastic cup. I'd much rather be in the VIP area hanging out with the cool people and then playing a massive set in front of adoring fans. And, and I've actually got two reasons why I wouldn't want to be in a band performing at a festival. The first reason is have you ever had one of those dreams where, you know, you, you stand up in front of a big crowd of people and then you realize you're naked or terrible and everybody's laughing at you i think that's what performing at a festival would be a bit like except everyone's drunk and doesn't remember in the morning and leaves you a terrible so review on trust pilot and and a terrible review on trust pilot this explains and... just just to go back on your point sorry this explains some of the jokes that you make on this podcast because you don't like the idea of people laughing at you so yeah yeah <laughs> Uh, That's twi- twice you've I'm tried right now, the, uh, so I don't care. twice you've tried the trust pilot joke and twice it's fallen flat on its ass. Give up. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> just on the record, this week we are not sponsored by trust pilots. John's just got review issues. <laughs> <laughs> you see, you see, like this is this is the kind of anxiety that I would have if I was having to perform in front of people. You know, it'd be worse than this podcast because I'd actually be able to see the faces of the people who are listening to me. 
Oh, I cannot. Um, and the number. Sorry, I was going to say. I just before you move on to point number two, I, I cannot wait until we start getting reviews and tweets and things like that that we get to read back, especially when no doubt some of them are going to be haters online, and I, I'm worried you're going to be able to cope with it. Do you want us to censor the censor the the comments that people leave for you? Well, he's already no, demanded that no one tweet him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, please, no. Nobody tweet me. It's just, that's, that's a red um, light to the, I... to the ball, the internet. <laughs> Don't tweet me. Guess what the internet's going to go and do? It's a bad, bad choice. You should have said, and... hey, don't tweet me, and then no one would. And then the second, <laughs> the second point is that everybody knows that famous rock stars who perform at festivals die. They kill themselves, and they die. I'm... Name a single rock star... Who's worth his soul, who hasn't died. Dave Grohl. Lemmy Kilminster has finally died at the age of 70-odd. He's dead. He is now. Yeah. At the age of 70-something. Coin- coincidence? I think not. Slash is still I read alive. I his autobiography. They were going to do him a blood transplant, and they said, no, if we take your blood out, give it to someone else, and give you their blood, they would die. Whatever's in your bloodstream is too toxic for us to do the blood transplant. We can't save you. We did Keith Richards. Keith Richards was all right, but... Let me kill Munster. You are not. You are. You, you are a medical anomaly. You should not be alive I'm, right now. I'm, I'm a bit yeah, disappointed, I... John, that he asked us to name any rock star that's alive. And I mean, we could easily <laughs> go on for hours and hours. And your first suggestion was a dead rock One star. One like, dead. You 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 you, you, immediately, you immediately lost this game. You just you just had to name. He died some... of old age. He's old. But he still died. The challenge was to name someone that's alive. It's too difficult. That's the point. It's too difficult to think of a rock star who's alive. <laughs> no, rock stars that die over the age of 28 aren't remembered. It's the ones that die before 28 that are remembered. Jimi Hendrix, Buddy Holly, Dead. Kurt Cobain. Dead. Dead. Order. But, 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 they died at 28. That's what it's called, 27. 30, so I'm going to... 27? 27. 27. That's why it's called the 27 so they, Club and not the 28 they, Club. They didn't. They didn't make it to 28. But I'm pushing 30, so I'm all right. I, essentially, I'm immune. I'll be all right. In a power yeah, Maybe. You've still not maybe. named... You've still not named... Sorry, it's just bugging <laughs> me. You've still not named one alive rock star. Axel Rose. Oh, come on. I mean, he's he's dead in all but name. Ian Wayland from Anthrax. Right, thank you. Now we may continue. Tom, fr- Tom from Slayer. <laughs> is, that, is, is that his full title? <laughs> My name's he's, Tom. he's exactly like Dan from Bastille. Tom from Slayer. Hi, Tom from Slayer, our 122nd listener. <laughs> I love it. That'd be amazing. Shout Danny out Filth. to Tom from Slayer. Danny Phil, Norwich's biggest export. No. Yeah. Sorry, is it Somerset's biggest export? No, I was going to say Norwich's biggest export. Aha! <laughs> Let's let's continue. I, I feel you're on your own there. Guys, come on, please. I'm go- I'm not, am I going to have to hire a virtual collie to keep you two sort of rounded up <laughs> and in line? No, just be better at your job and it'll be fine. Yeah, it's starting to feel anyway. a bit like work. Yeah, do continue. <laughs> <laughs> so, having dismissed the idea that it would be a good thing to attend a music festival as a musician... I'd like to move on to why I would like to attend as a member of the general public. So you can stand in lines at the burger van for 25 minutes to get a bowler. No, well, that's, no, that's sorry. one of the... Sorry, E. coli, that's the one, isn't it? <laughs> or salmonella, well, pick, pick your poison. E. coli is in the top five of my Reasons diseases. Reasons to go to a festival. <laughs> <laughs> It also sounds like an excellent band name. Yeah, I was just E-co- thinking that. <laughs> I always I always go to see E. coli when they're playing. My favourite band I've ever seen at a festival, and I can't remember, I think possibly you came with me, John. I think it was the second year we went to download, but possibly the first, was when we went to go and see the band Colon Open Parentheses. Um, it, that wasn't written down in letters. That was just they. Yeah. Oh, oh wow. It was. It, they were playing keyboards, but they were playing computer keyboards. 
and it just it haunts me to this very day. Just I'm, I'm, maybe I'm gonna actually after this I'm gonna go back and listen to them just to see maybe if they've gotten better with age, but <laughs> possibly like a fine wine. <laughs> like a fine wine. Maybe maybe they just weren't maybe they maybe they weren't appreciated in their time. But I wasn't I wasn't blown away. But it was an experience that I will forever treasure. You came back and said they were awful. <laughs> as we as we you stated last, Ruben. you left Ruben like on a high, like oh yeah, they're actually better than I thought. And uh, you went to go see them, and you came back like oh, that's that's an area of my life I'm not going to get back. As as I said, it's it's subjective, and everyone's got different tastes. I mean, I haven't heard of them or seen them play anything since that festival, so I can't imagine that I was my my thought process was a rare one. But um, yeah. Uh, yeah, so check out colon open parentheses, folks. <laughs> or don't. Your life will yeah. be much different either way. <laughs> if you want to waste more of your life, rather listen to this podcast, go listen to colon open parentheses. Oh, they're, they're much better than this po- podcast. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> They've probably got better production. Oh, definitely. <laughs> Without a doubt. <laughs> no, I'd, um, I'd love to headline download. Because I'm just going to bust in there with headlining because that's that's the that's the main aim for playing at a festival is to headline somewhere. Just imagine, just imagine that like a hundred thousand people like singing the songs that you wrote, or more likely blagging your way as a guitar tech and then managing to get into the main band with the main guitar. And just going, oh, I'm going to you know, create a jazz funk album and you somehow wormed your way in there and hadn't done any of the hard work, which is probably how I'd get in if I was going to get into a big band at some point. See, I think, just, just imagine, I think... Just imagine a sea, a, a literal sea of people singing the songs. Yeah, and as, as somebody, as somebody who would be attending it as a member of the general public, I don't have to imagine because I get to attend the headlining show. I get to attend every headlining show at the festival I'm attending if I, if I choose because I'm a paying member of the public. Um, but, you know, as, as a band member attending, frankly, you know, as you said, the dream is always to headline the festival. You want to be the person who's having your song screamed back to you. I think statistically, as a band, you are going to be frankly disappointed because there are well over a hundred bands at any given festival, and only and only one per day can be the headliner of the main stage. Do you, you know, think do you, those, do you, those odds are not in your favour? Do you think that's why they were called oh, colon no. open parentheses and not colon closed parentheses? Precisely. <laughs> oh. And and you know if if I was to perform, you know years later people will make a po- podcast mocking my music, <laughs> still talking about how bad we were. <laughs> you know I just can't I can't live with that. I'd rather be the person who attended and did the mocking afterwards had a good story rather than you know constantly worrying and scouring twitter for people slating me <laughs> i mean there was no you'd want to you'd want to be in the band you want to be playing the shows you want to be playing through massive martial stacks and you'd want to be bleeding from your ears screaming lyrics till your lungs exploded and then hanging out backstage with all the other cool bands that everyone else never gets to meet and when you're not actually playing, you can skulk off and like go side stage and like see other bands play like right next to them. You could be right there. You don't have to think about oh, I've got to try and like manage to worm my way through the crowds. I'm I'm way too polite to be pushing past people. I'm also quite wide. I'm not gonna lie. I find filtering through crowds an incredibly awkward chore because I'm also quite tall. So as I made it in front of someone, I normally have got my bald spot straight in their line, and that's that's not something someone wants to see. So I'd much rather stand side stage and hang out no. with bands, throw bottles of water at people. I'm just imagining just you there, ready. You saying you're quite polite. I'm imagining you on stage, and uh, my favourite dynamic that I see at festivals and gigs, and it happens. You watch it pretty much. I'd say 90% of the front men in bands, at some point, they will go, "How are we doing, everyone?" And everyone cheers, and without a doubt, doesn't matter how loud everyone cheers, they go, "Come on, you can do better than that," or "I can't fucking hear you." And everyone cheers again. We know he's going to ask again. They know they're going to ask again, which is probably why we don't cheer loud the first time, because we don't want to hurt <laughs> ourselves trying to beat the cheer the second time. You being quite polite 
from saying you don't want to push past people on stage. You go, how are we doing, everyone? Yeah. Pardon? Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> it would be quite an interesting uh, a dynamic to see you you're doing that on stage. So there's clearly nothing fun about tinnitus. You, you, have, you have those but, Marshall stacks blaring out, and it's just, it's just going to ruin your hearing. Not if you wear studio monitors. Or stage monitors, sorry. Um, the nice. What kind of rock star does that? All the modern ones, because they know what happens to all of the stage closed drummers. They go deaf. I, I could see. Learn to, from your elders. To be fair, I could see John. I can't see you as a rock star, and I don't mean that in an insult by any means, because I don't see any of us as a rock star. Oh. But I could see you as a country star. Like, um, Thank what's the what's you. the band? No, what's the band that does the bluegrass that play quite a lot at um, download and. Hey, and Reading. Hey, C. Dixie. Hey, C. I could see you in a band like Hey, C. Dixie. Why do I do I do I suit a pair of dungarees? Yeah. No, that was reto- that was rhetorical. <laughs> Dun- <laughs> <laughs> dungarees, no oh. shirt, straw hat, bit of wheat hanging out the corner of your mouth while you pluck away at your banjo. The point is, all the fun is being had in the audience. You know, you're you're throwing around inflatables. There's no boob cam anymore. They're not allowed boob cam. As far as I'm aware. One year they uh there was quite because obviously there's the camera goes on the young girls and they're they're peer pressured into getting their um their lady bits out and apparently there was a complaint one year because someone saw that their daughter had done it on one of the shows or something and their daughter was only fifteen and all of a sudden it was how do we monitor this and oh, it's not been allowed since to the point that even bands like um Steel Panther that are famous for doing that. Like, there's a song that they get all the girls up on stage and it was absolutely amazing there was like 80, 90 women on stage we were just watching this guy this is incredible but there was maybe one or two girls that were trying to like flash on the stage and security were just on them like not, like white on rice just straight in like pretty much took them out escorted them off the stage it was no no areola for anyone and just that that one girl ruined it for everyone well Probably didn't ruin it for the underage girls and girls in general that felt peer pressured into uh, getting their flesh out for the lecherous men in the audience. But, um, wow, did I just defend women's rights? Who are you and what you've done with our friends? Yeah, that's, but no, it's, it's correct. Like, as much as I, just like every other red-blooded male, thoroughly enjoyed the boob camp, and probably a vast majority of the women did as well, because it was quite a, just a light-hearted thing. There was probably a lot of women that felt, felt quite uncomfortable about it, but... Um, yeah, still one of my favourite memories was first year at Download after I'd probably eaten my eighth Snickers was John's face as we saw this woman walk past in the baking like 28 degree heat and all she was wearing was a hat and a single piece of duct tape that was covering her nether regions. That was it. And I've, I've, I, I just remember John's face being in utter bewilderment that such a thing would exist in, in his world. It was... I, so, I mean, for me, how do, how do I, I always... How do I, I always thought on that main stage? <laughs> okay. Ah. One of you go first. So how do I defend I always... being on main stage? <laughs> <laughs> how do I defend being on main stage? And I'm saying, oh, I don't do boob cam when there's actually possibly underage girls out there. That's not, that's not cricket. I mean, I always thought the best thing about boob cam was when it wasn't when the men were getting their breasts out. I was, because I was going to say was the, the really part bad of bad. it. <laughs> yeah, that was... That was what that was what boob cam was all about. It, you know, it was never supposed to be a lecherous kind of thing for me. It was all about mocking the system back at them. My, my Embarrassing the roadies. My favourite was when the crowd used to go on a girl and she'd just shake her head. And the, the camera would go back on two or three times and she'd keep shaking her head. So the whole crowd would boo. And all I ever used to think, <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong, I'd boo along. But all I used to think was only a music festival. You walk down the street... And pointed the camera at a girl, and if she didn't take her top off, and you just booed at her, like you would rightly be arrested. Yeah, that's not how you conduct yourself in public. But at a festival is very much like, oh, she's not, she's not, she's not showing me her, her very personal possessions. Like, boo! It's, it's it's just a very different planet. Yeah, it's a very different planet when you can walk into a campsite and scream Timmy, and then hear it like ripple down the field, like a stone skipping over water. It was poetically beautiful but at the same time it was very strange it's a difficult one to call really because i've never played a festival yet i've been to thousands of them and a thousands is an exaggeration obviously but 
It's in the tent. I, it's in the tent. There's, there's, there's something magical about a festival. I don't tend to do abroad holidays. For me, I do, I do my music festivals and and gigs. That's that's they're my holidays that I do each year. Um, and I just think. Is there anything magical about those toilets, Matthew? That's what we want to know. They don't really bother me, other than that one year that we went that they forgot to put the uh, bleach down the hole. Other than that, they're not too bad, really. Um, it's just, as we said, it's such a different place where it's it's like going into Wonderland. It really is. And I'm sure everyone's got different experiences of festivals, and they're very different which one you go to. My, my weekend festival of choice is Download, and it's just, it's just a magic place. And I feel like I don't want to see the man behind the curtain. I think it would ruin it. I don't want to see how the other half live. I... We'll yeah. go catering tents and beer and never, people... Never meet your heroes. Not having, better the devil not having, you know. Like, better the devil you know. Squeeze past other people. But I, I've been doing it for over a decade now. I, I know what to expect. and you, could, you, could, you couldn't play a festival at a high enough level to make it worth it and then revert back to just going to a festival. It wouldn't be the same experience because people would recognise you... You wouldn't be able to just be there and just be part of the experience. You're part of, you are part of the festival. You're part of that hive. Sorry, sorry to harp on about Enter Shikari, but they were in Blue Camp the year we went. They were camping and they were like slumming it with the people. They were slumming with the common folk. They could have gone backstage and had like the VIP experience and done their show and gone. But, but once again, that weekend. was that was when they were fairly low down on the bill. This wasn't when they were they were higher up. And I mean, surely if you want to play a festival, you're going to want to be further up, further up on the bill. But either way, yeah, they could. And maybe they'd like the attention or maybe they weren't big enough to get the attention. I'm not sure. But if I was at a festival, I wouldn't, maybe want I wouldn't to be... be big enough to get the attention. Maybe I'd wear a mask on stage like Slipknot. I mean, maybe I yeah, could filter in amongst all the Joe public. There's there's ways around it, I'm sure. But I just I, I wouldn't want to risk my festival experience for anything. And... I, th- I think that would that would possibly ruin it. This is a festival, not a pilgrimage, Matthew. No, it's a pilgrimage for me. Every year I go and I cleanse my soul and come back a little a little happier for at least a few days. So I picked the wrong side from the off. Cheers. Well, I did listen to your arguments, and it would be don't get me wrong, it would be absolutely amazing to play at a festival. But um, yeah, weighing it up. But you're not a musician. You don't have that aspiration. This is true. So. Yeah, you never stood a chance. We'll um, we'll end it there. <laughs> so, as, as, as normal, um, tweet at us, at Would Jay Rather, John Would Rather, John Would Rather, hashtag, leave us reviews on iTunes, you can listen on iTunes, Stitcher, tune in on your Alexa. We're waiting to find out if we're going to be on Spotify, baited breath. Apparently, we don't get sent an email confirmation, so I just check every day, and it could take up to two months, so... That's that's part of my daily routine now. Also, if you want to try get John was robbed trending, that'd be really nice. Remember John without an H. And as usual, I'd prefer it if you just don't follow me or don't tweet me at all. <laughs> Red rag to a ball. Yeah, he's. I mean, I think that's that's his plan, really. I think he's using that because he wants to win. Because we we know how much he likes to win, and I think he's he's thought about it too much. So. I know, I know it might be red rag to a ball to all you listeners, but please actually don't follow him. Just <laughs> te- teach him a lesson. Like, I am quite happy to set myself on fire as long as I can watch him burn down with me. Don't follow him. Follow, follow the main Twitter. Follow John without an H, but just don't follow John with an H. He, to be honest, he, does, he hasn't got much, very many interesting things to say on Twitter. He doesn't have anything to say on Twitter. At... John would rather is completely silent. <laughs> and I think that's how he wants to keep it. The H is silent. <laughs> Maybe you could just once a year tweet the word echo. <laughs> right. So we'll, we'll, we'll go on to a second question. Thank you for indulging me. I, I know you guys don't festival as much as you used to, but you can clearly tell that there's still the opportunity and the passion that you've gone for those last two questions over the last two weeks. So, Hopefully I'll see you soon at a, a festival coming up, on or off stage, which whichever you prefer. I wish you all the best in your um, your bluegrass country dubstep reggae band, John. And uh, thank you. I'll be at another stage watching a different band. 
So, would you rather? Probably. Would you rather have spaghetti for hair or gravy for sweat? Uh, I think I'd have to have, have gravy for sweat, and I'll tell you two reasons why. <laughs> and I'll tell you for why. <laughs> I'll tell you for why. Uh, the first reason is that I would really like gravy. You know, if you ever go for... <laughs> <laughs> you just go for a workout just to lick yourself. <laughs> well, I know. <laughs> ironically, after the, th- the running theme, like a cat, like just licking himself, <laughs> keeping himself clean. <laughs> How many times have you gone to, I don't know, a pub and had roast dinner <laughs> and gone, you know, there just isn't enough gravy and... You know, as I'm British and I, you know, it's 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 awkward to catch eyes with the waiter and complain about something. I'm just going to, you know, just sweat it out. Just go, go for a jog around the block. <laughs> going to go rub and, your roast beef in your armpit. And <laughs> suddenly your gravy woes are over. Number two reason. <laughs> You've got another is one? That <laughs> My second reason is more a reason why I wouldn't want to have spaghetti for hair. And that's because I get hungry and I don't want to eat my hair and then have no hair. I've got a bit of anxiety about losing my hair one day. <laughs> and one day. One I, don't, day. I don't I don't want to hasten the journey <laughs> by eating it all. <laughs> You don't I think love you spaghetti. Have, you don't think you have that much self I mean, it's going to be dry spaghetti. Not like dry, like cooked spaghetti, but there's no sauce or anything. I've, yeah, but I've got gravy for sweat. No, wait, I don't. No, you, you don't have foam. <laughs> <laughs> John's just like, John's gravy running away with this. I want, I, want, I want gravy for sweat and spaghetti for hair and hash browns for feet. And uh... <laughs> I want to cry bolognese. <laughs> I mean, I've, I've, oh, I've nails to be made out of garlic bread. <laughs> John, I've got this thing right where <laughs> <laughs> I've got this thing. It's a real, it's a real problem. No, I'm no, sweaty gravy. <laughs> so you know, I, I don't know if I've spoken about it before, but I, I get weird looks. But so, you know, people at weddings they have chocolate fountains. <laughs> I want a gravy fountain at my wedding. So instead of a chocolate fountain with marshmallows and fruit and biscuits and things, I want a gravy fountain got... with little cubes of meat. Seen. Little cubes of meat and, yeah, fried chicken, little roast potatoes, bits of broccoli, you know, things that you can dip in gravy instead of chocolate. Now, with your assistance in this scenario, I could set you up a little <laughs> human hamster wheel in the corner <laughs> with a common system at the bottom. And you could produce the gravy at my wedding. I'm going to save you hundreds and hundreds of pounds in hundreds rental fees. Of, hundreds of pounds in gravy fees. <laughs> just to confirm, just in case, just in case anyone's wondering, this is beef gravy. Just in case that changes anything. Not particularly. Okay. I, so I, yeah, I, again, I've picked the losing side because you've already decided to go into business with John. <laughs> no, <laughs> I was. It was. It was merely a. a an on an ongoing suggestion from the fact that his his go to was I'm gonna sweat on my food. <laughs> <laughs> but but no, I I'm curious for come on come on spaghetti hair. Oh, I'd love one of those play day machines, wouldn't I? <laughs> you would. <laughs> oh, that's fine. Like if I could have a full hair of pasta, I'd be happy. Like. My receding hairline and my my uh, my thinning hair is is quite depressing. It's quite a nice thick was, two mil follicle of pure spaghetti. I was going to say, as, I could do. as someone in the fellow fellow thinning hair camp, is it not so much that the hair is spaghetti, but just any any semblance of any sort of hair in general would be thankful? Because I can definitely see imagine, your point. Imagine the cornrows I could have. Oh, that could be like proper wow. trailer trash. It'd be brilliant. <laughs> Um, I'm sure you've got many more points, but I, I didn't think of this until just now, and I don't know why cornrows was what put it into my head. But are you not worried about birds? At what at what what stage of my life? 
my hair's not made of chips. I'm not going to be attacked by seagulls. No, but surely seagulls and pigeons and things would be attracted to the... I mean, maybe they'd be attracted to the gravy as well. I didn't think of that, but... I mean, on the top of your head, it just seems like a target for, for birds. Really? I, I imagine. I'm, I'm going to Google how, how many Italian people get their uh, their bolognese stolen by seagulls every year. That's quite compared specific. to how many people go to Brighton or Blackpool. Shout out to our Brighton listeners. How many people go to Brighton or Blackpool and have their chips <laughs> nicked by a seagull? I mean, we're not comparing chips. I don't, I don't chips. think I'd be too the much compar- trouble in this country. The comparison isn't what do seagulls prefer, chips or spaghetti. I'm just saying they're not that fussy and they'd probably be quite partial to spaghetti. But they don't know what spaghetti is. They're fucking seagulls. Oh, and you think they're, they're looking down <laughs> and going, oh, no, they're french fries. I much prefer myself a nice chunky chip. They don't know what chips are I mean, either. In, in a bird's eyes... Have you eyes, seen what a chip is? It, you know it, what a chip is? Yeah. You, you know I'm, what spaghetti is? I'm not a bird. Is. They don't look... They don't look different. <laughs> I'm not they a bird. They don't look any different. No, they just see food. It is food in general. They don't see differences in food. Sorry. When was the last time a seagull went to, like, catering college to know what food is? You don't need to go to... Ca- you didn't go to catering college. You fucking know what food is, you cretin. <laughs> that's because I'm a human. And that's my point. Of course they know what food is. Otherwise, they'd be trying to eat a bench or... <laughs> you know? They'd eat a bench once and go, nah, that's not food. They'd go peck someone's head and go, nah, that's not food. So they wouldn't bother pecking my head. But if your head was spaghetti to... and they pecked it, it would be food. <laughs> yes, so so the one goal that I'd never pecked someone's head before would peck my head and be like, oh, this is all right. Okay, and then I'd never so, go to that side town again. Okay, let's just let's just backtrack a bit because I think we're getting our wires crossed. If you put, I could wear a hat. Chips, if you put chips, Jesus, Christ, I could wear a hat. Put, Calm down. If you put chips on your head, do you think you would get flocked by birds and the birds would try and eat the chips off yes. of your head? Yes. So what is the difference chips. if it's spaghetti? Yes, because that's what gulls steal. Chips and ice creams, that is what gulls steal. So your argument has nothing to do with where the food is. You just think that birds have a preference and aren't a fan of pasta. <laughs> yes! What was it like? <laughs> Seriously, when was the last time you saw someone walk down the promenade with a plate full of spaghetti and meatballs? Exactly. So how do you know that birds don't like pasta? <laughs> it's what they're used to. It's their environment. Is it the if type of pasta? Chip, they... Would they would they eat it? Oh if it was, God! Would, listen to me. Would they would they eat it if it was penne or rigatoni? <laughs> Is it just because it's spaghetti? Do they not like the fact that it's messy? Oh my God! Will you will you listen to yourself for one second? <laughs> the promenade <laughs> has got fish and chip stands and it's got ice creams. People have ice creams and people have got fish and chips all the goddamn time. And the birds so don't go, eat oh, the ice cream. The target. Who walks around with bolognese? Nobody. Can I just interject? <laughs> Can I interject? Please. I no. think you've just given me a business idea, which is to sell spaghetti bolognese <laughs> on the promenade. <laughs> because the don't know what it is at the moment. Spaghetti There's bolognese. There's clearly not enough of it. Hey! Hey! There we go. That's two business ideas. I'm, I'm sorry, but I'm Googling, do birds like pasta? Leftover cooked plain pasta or rice is a great source of carbohydrates, especially for granivorous birds. I'm going to presume that granivorous means birds that eat grain, but I will Google just because you're adamant. Granivorous. (sighs) Granivorous. Feeding on grain. So any bird that eats grain would eat your hair. (laughs) Birds. So what we've learned today is birds don't eat pasta due to the availability of pasta. Not because they don't like pasta. Birds don't have a preference. Birds aren't racist against Italians. They just don't have access. What am I fighting for again? Spaghetti for hair. <laughs> yeah, I'd look like one of those Play-Doh motherfuckers, wouldn't I? Yeah, okay, so let's backtrack right to the beginning of this of this conversation. <laughs> You'd wear a hat. That's how you answer. Let's pretend that's how you originally answered the question of what would you do about birds trying to eat your hair? <laughs> I answered it midway through, and you just went, "No, goals, they eat your head, mate." <laughs> I don't care about chips. <laughs> right, uh, uh, let's give you another opportunity to defend spaghetti for hair because we we got a bit sidetracked by a. Uh... John, how many white shirts do you wear like day to day? Only one per day. Right. So, how many days of work? Like, how many days a week do you work and have to wear shirts? Uh, five. Five days a you work five days a week. Do you ever, ever sweat? Bear in mind, you get on public transport where it's quite quite warm, quite crowded. You 
do you go on the tube? Do you go on the bus? In fact, neither are valid arguments because they're both horribly warm. It doesn't matter if it's winter. It doesn't matter if it's summer. You are sweating gravy. Every single one of your white shirts are going to turn brown. See, you took that the... Uh, not a good look. You took the right so approach So I'm going to go on the attack. I'm going to discredit John's gravy sweats because it's just <laughs> going to look terrible. On the practicality. Down your back, on your armpits, around the collars. I'm it's glad, just not going to be good. I'm glad you pointed out that he'd sweat on the public transport because for anyone that doesn't know... John definitely doesn't do a job that makes him sweat. <laughs> <laughs> More for them. I don't normally go on the attack. I don't normally discredit the other person's choice. <laughs> it was it was amazing. There it is was like be very few situations where you're going to get away with being able to sweat gravy in your nine to five Monday to Friday type of job. <laughs> it was amazing. It was like you know when somebody winds up a dog and then the dog bites them. Except I wound you up and you bit him. That was really good fun. <laughs> I, I'm really enjoying the way that this worked. <laughs> Sick it, John. Go on, go in for the kill. Leave my spaghetti hair alone. <laughs> just imagine, just imagine you and your wife, John, are in the passions of of love, and she she licks your ear. Hmm. Crazy. Well, you go through Yorkshire right now, so she just leaves you and goes to make some Yorkshire puddings. I've Even to be better. honest, that, that's you, harsh. Now I've, now I've got a wife, and I've got Yorkshire puddings. You've but you've both been party to my business that I've wanted to start before, which was a savoury lubricant, and I've been an endorser of gravy flavoured lube for a long time for the Northern Market in, in the UK. I have I've so, never backed you with that. <laughs> Just to put it out there. No, but you've you've heard about it. I'm I'm sure at some point I will endorse my uh, try and get some some backers uh, for my for my lubrication idea. But uh, I just I dig, digress. But I do think that. I think that when you talk about sexual food, it's always on the sweet side, and I prefer savoury. And if I remember correctly, I oh know you preferred sweet, so I'm I'm arguing against you on that one. But I I feel like I hijacked a lot of your your decision persuading time of spaghetti hair by attacking you with birds. And I want to give you one more opportunity because I'm going to pre warn you, which I've never done before. At the moment, I'm very much in gravy camp. Like, I, I understand gravy is a commodity in this day and age because we don't have any access to Bisto because that's been put to the black market. Oh, the, mines, oh, no, the mines are running it dry. Hasn't. The mines it are running hasn't. dry. Why? Have you not been to Tesco's or Morrison's there was, or Sainsbury's? There was a Mr. Morris, a Mr. Morris Brown down in Gloucestershire. He had his house bought of him for £300,000 above the asking price. Because they knew there was a stream of Bisto running through it, and they've uh, they've started fracking, just because it's so rare. You're full of horseshit. <laughs> you are full of horseshit. But imagine if you could Stop frack it. for gravy. Imagine if you could frack for gravy though. Imagine if gravy <sighs> was the same price as petrol and made from dinosaurs. Hashtag John was robbed yet again. As soon as the word gravy came into the uh, to the argument, you already made up your mind. What's more expensive per pound, gravy or spaghetti? That's what I'm going to judge this on. Back, call back, unfortunately, to uh, the price is right. So I'm going to ask John that knows how much everything costs. But essentially, you could use this to make money by, by selling it and by feeding it. You'd be your own farm. So, and I'm not going well, to try and do the math of how quickly your head, because don't forget, you've not just got hair on the top of your head. I mean, I personally wouldn't eat pubic spaghetti, but <laughs> there, <laughs> there would be I people in my I grew down by my waist. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's the whole grain spaghetti. Um, you don't want to know where the gluten free grows. And so, so per pound, what's more expensive, spaghetti or gravy? Well, I think you're asking a difficult question actually, because it's not just about how much it weighs when you buy it. Both of these products you add water to, and they expand. Exactly. So we'll take that out of the equation. Dry product when you buy it per per pound per kilo. 100 grams, what's more expensive? Saffron? Uh, uh, it's, it's, would you, it's would you rather don't pick your... Pick your this isn't a pick your pasta, adventure game. You, know. you, don't get, you don't get to decide your fate. This isn't Dungeons no, you, and Dragons you, or World of Warcraft. You just, you just get the dungeon master who's predetermined what he's going to fucking pick. No, I'm giving, <laughs> you, I'm, I'm giving you a choice and I'm asking you your reasons behind your choice. It's not a roll of the it's dice. Rigged. It's not rigged. I can't believe it. It's happened to me this week. It's happened to the other John. Like, 
several times, and I can't believe he's not actually had uproar. It's never happened to me, and I'm kicking off. Right, I have given you. We, I admitted, I admitted I was siding with gravy, and I've even thrown you a bone by saying, "Tell you what, let's figure out which one weighs more." Just trying to help you out, but you've blown it for yourself. Gravy because wins. We know, I mean, I, I'll acknowledge the nine-time that... peer bag. Astro is nine-time peer bag for a kilo. Gravy is like two pounds for like. How much? Right, I'm going to open my cupboard right now. I've got this dough right here <laughs> in my hand. I can will you, acknowledge that can you uh, gravy in its dried form is uh, more, expen- more expensive per gram than dried spaghetti. However, uh, a pack of spaghetti will last you exactly one meal. Because you, my cook it, because you cook it all, no matter how many people you're cooking for. How big the bag. <laughs> exactly. I'm glad we're on the same page here. And gravy, well, if you buy a, a box of Bisto, I mean, it's going to last you at least two. So per meal, uh, it's it's going to go a lot further. So okay. if, if you want to pick gravy squares, better value. you'd have to stay, you'd have to, you'd have to get better value, but... You have to stay indoors for six months of the year. Otherwise, every time you went outside, did any mild activity, you'd end up getting gravy in your eyes. You couldn't ever go to the gym. You couldn't ever go for a run. You couldn't ever go to the beach. Because you'd end up with sweaty gravy in your eyes. How horrible is that? Whereas pasta for hair, you could unfortunately choose to shave your head and not embrace the full pasta locks. But, you know, that is a choice that some people have. Some people have the slightest thinning of hair and they shave their heads and they go with the old Bruce Willis look, which isn't the worst in the world. And it's one that myself and John and Matthew will actually have to do one day unless we try and cling to um, the monk look. But I, I don't see that as a particularly good look in life. See, or you no. can erase the pasta locks and you can have the pasta dreads. You can have crazy pasta cornrows. Now, now you're thinking. See, now I've got you on you're back on even Stevens because the practicality in reality, as much as I prefer gravy, I could just you wouldn't even need to shave it because it's spaghetti. You could just press a bit hard with your hand and wipe it all off each morning <laughs> in the shower. You'd probably need you to, to get some sort of. You'd have to wash compact. your sheets every single night because you do get a little bit warm. Yeah. That's why mattresses weigh way more when you get rid of them than they do when you buy them because they absorb sweat. Just imagine if they use all gravy. Just imagine the horrible bacteria that they've been living in gravy. Just imagine how quickly you'd have to replace all of your white shirts, all of your linen, all of your duvets, all of your mattresses. It's just not cool. I'm going to you ask never... you... Just imagine going to a sauna. Just imagine going to a sauna and, like, chilling out. And you've got the white towel draped over yourself, and it turns brown within about 35 seconds. You would turn the hot tub. not going to like you, are they? You turn the hot tub into a gravy hot tub, and I can't think of anything that I'd want to get in (laughs) more than a hot tub full of gravy, I'm going to be honest. But I'm going to... Imagine getting into hot This is This is the most gravy. This is the most difficult question I've posed you. So I'm going to I'm going to decide this and I'm going to ask you both one question and I need you to answer very quickly. And I don't think either of you know my preference. So John with the gravy, give me a fluid that would match the consistency of the gravy that you would sweat. Go. Custard. Okay. John, the firmness of the spaghetti, how is it going to grow out of you? Al dente. Gravy wins. <laughs> I don't know any other pasta types. I like my pasta overcooked and soft, and I like my gravy in slices. So, and that was all that I based it on then because you were bringing it back hard there, John, with the spaghetti. It was making sense, and I, I had to some, I had to figure out a way of of calling it because that was that was the toughest question yet that I've had to judge. And I'm I'm very impressed, John, that you managed to bring it back as well as you did, even though you did lose. And let's not forget, you did lose. But you brought it back hard at the end. From 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 literally, it was like ten nil. You brought it back up to ten all, extra time, and then John just poked some gravy in the back of the net. Game over. So gravy wins. Just one more time, just to make sure that we're we're firm in the knowledge of gravy one. Have you got a question for me? I do. Let me look at my archive. Okay. I feel I feel like after my uh, is it Stephen King who wrote the birds like attack on you that this isn't going to end well for me, but. Was it Stephen King who wrote The Birds? So, would you rather the Flat Earthers were correct or the people who believe the government is run by lizard people were correct? Hmm. So basically, 
just to simplify your question down, would have rather that the Earth was flat or the government was run by lizard people? Pretty much. Like, expand and simplify, that's what you've asked me. So, yeah, so, so the people that wear tinfoil hats would have been right all along. In answer to your question, I'm going to go mm-hmm. with li- lizard people. <laughs> okay. I'd have laughed either way. I'd, I'd just like to hear why. I, I'm going to go with lizard people because they clearly know more than us. If they've managed to rise into government and hide it from us, that only a few know about it, and also that the rest of the general public think that the people who know about it are mental then we've clearly got something to learn by them. And does it really matter if they're lizard people or not? They're just another race. And if they're lizard people, they're people too. And to not accept them and trust them when they clearly know more than us would be racism. And as we all know, I don't see colour. <laughs> OK, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I don't think we should discriminate against anyone. Lizard people or otherwise. Or flat earthers. They're people too. They are people too. Ridiculous, ridiculous people. So this is the thing. I guess if we're going back, I, the people that believe in these theories, they could be right or wrong. I, I don't really care, to be honest. But what it comes down to is I don't have a problem with lizard people. If there are such a thing as lizard people, shout out to all our lizard listeners. I would have an issue with <laughs> the earth being flat because it would change the whole dynamic. I want to know how I would do a round the world flight. Because all of a sudden, I'd be flying in a circle, like, on a horizontal plane. As opposed to a a circle around a sphere. Yeah, I mean, I understand how different animals work, how different species work. So lizard people would probably be genetically quite similar and biologically and anatomically similar to humans, but maybe cold-blooded like a lizard. Maybe they need to bask in the heat a bit more. Maybe that's why a lot of... So your hotel would provide more heat lamps. Exactly. So... I don't. I don't see why. It, I don't see why it would be an issue if the world was run by lizard people. It's, it's the same as when you asked me about aliens, and I, I'm all ready to embrace all other species. I'm. I'm a very accepting person. I don't believe in any sort of discrimination, except against Mexicans. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I won the uh, Mexican versus Russian debate. <laughs> How many weeks back? I am I am obviously joking. Uh, when I worked in New York, I had worked with a whole host of Mexican people and learned a lot of Spanish from them. And they were absolutely... The, the amount of times we ended up in the picnic eating guacamole. I didn't even think I liked guacamole. I don't like guacamole. I was just eating it because I was enjoying hanging around with them. And everything was so too spicy. Pressure. Well, no, it was just... I was trying all the different foods. So everything was far too spicy for me. And they laughed at me when I cried. It was a jolly good day out. I called you flaco. They did call me Flacco. And then you supported the Baltimore Ravens because their quarterback was called Flacco. Exactly. So it was... Oh, dear. It was, it was multiple. No, I don't, I don't believe in discrimination against any race, be they human or other. So, well, based on, based on the reasons... And you're happy I've, with that. That's cool. Ba- based on the reasons I've given, if you try to tell me I'm wrong, you come out as a racist. Be quiet, Matthew. No one asked you that. <laughs> So, um, yeah, bring on the lizard overlords. End of discussion. Uh, that's a very, very interesting note to leave this, uh, this podcast on. It is. So if you're a lizard overlord and you'd like to invest in us, then uh, please get in touch. Our email address is available on our, I believe, our iTunes and possibly our website. Or tweet at us, however you'd like to, if you're, a, if you're a lizard person who'd like to support us. Or just send in a question. So... We're particularly open to questions from lizard people. Definitely. So we're, we're not saying we give preferential treatment, but we would give preferential treatment if we, if we got lizard overlords. No, because if we gave preferential treatment, then that would still be a form of discrimination. So we don't <laughs> at all. I just, I, I mean, I but do. Say, but say that we've had no viewer submissions. Sorry, we've had no listener submissions. So if, uh, if a lizard overlord had to pose their question to us in the next few days, we'd probably give them the first shot of the listener section yeah i mean it doesn't ironically enough it breaks down on the statistics of who's been listening by country but not by race or ethnicity which i think would be a bit of a weird way to break down a a podcast if you had to answer that question before you started listening to it like some weird equal opportunities employment form i think what percentage of lizard are you yes exactly (laughs) i'm waiting for species to come up lizard pearson oh okay right yeah 
Yeah, okay. We've, we found on these guys. And, uh, yeah, so on on that note, anybody, we're accepting of all people, please get in touch and let us know how you think we're getting on. I've not been John. I've been John, and I love our lizard overlords. And I've been John. Hasta la bisto, gravy. <laughs> oh, my God. Somebody do it, let everybody go!